Guys, if you're anything like me, you've been binge watching TV for the last several days and you've straight up lost track of time. And what's that? No more episodes of Hitler's Ice Road Truckers or Beverly Hills? I'm gonna flip. Don't worry. I have you covered well into 2016 on today's episode of The Dan Cave, which is all about the most binge-worthy TV of 2015. Rick and Morty. As a wise man once said, Wubba lubba dub dub! Rick and Morty is the smartest, savviest, and most consistently hilarious sci-fi show on TV. And it takes a special kind of TV show to deliver both dick jokes and existential crises in equal measure. But hey, that's the kind of show that Rick and Morty is. The kind of show with a character named Mr. Poopy Butthole the kind of character that you love. Catastrophe. Boston and London have a complicated history to say the least. Back in the day, London demanded money for stamps, so Boston threw their tea in the harbor and things kind of escalated from there. Now in Catastrophe, we're entering into a new equally messy chapter as a Boston ad exec and London school teacher's one night stand results in an accidental pregnancy. Whoops. But unlike the tea, they're keeping this baby. That it stars Sharon Horgan and Rob Delaney is just icing on this deliciously uncomfortable cake. You know, like a pineapple upside down cake that's right side up. The Americans. Stop sleeping on this incredible Cold War spy drama, guys. Even though it gets passed over like so many firstborns every award season, this story of two KGB spies posing as Americans in suburban Washington, D.C. consistently delivers the best twists and turns on TV. Three seasons in, this show has hit its stride with a frightfully addictive look at the effects this kind of work can have on a person. Plus, it's Carrie Russell back on TV. And Lord knows there's been a felicity-shaped hole in our hearts since 2002. And don't you dare bring up Running Wild. Don't you dare. Jessica Jones. Guys, this is the best TV show that Marvel has done so far. Period. And mic drop. Jessica Jones is a slow burn mystery that deftly handles delicate issues of trauma and representation while delivering tense, nuanced storytelling tinged with noir and regret. No one is purely a good guy or a bad guy. They're all just people trying to make the best of a bad situation. Okay, well, maybe Kilgrave is a bad guy. But one thing is certain, seeing Luke Cage and Jessica Jones go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Purple Man was a comic book lover's dream come true. Sorry, Defenders, but season two cannot come quickly enough. Bar Rescue. Now, before you turn your nose up and scoff at this one, do me a favor and watch an episode. John Taffer is like if Gordon Ramsay were your uncle who actually got results. With an absurd success rate and a salty yet ultimately benevolent demeanor, John Taffer yells at failing bar owners until they get their shit together. And we get to watch the often spectacular results. One bar was actually haunted by ghosts. The Flash. Grant Gustin's Barry Allen is the best version of Peter Parker I've ever seen on screen. By which I mean his turns The Flash is by turns funny, sweet, and tremendously charismatic, aka what I would want from an on-screen Spider-Man. But you know what? He's The Flash, and that's even better. Because this show was always a risky proposition for TV. But Greg Berlanti and his crack team have struck gold yet again precisely because they are willing to take risks. As a result, we've had the multiverse, King Shark, and Gorilla Mother Grod twice. A telepathic gorilla on TV twice. What a time to be alive, superhero fans. Man in the High Castle. What? You're telling me the brutal story of the Nazis winning World War II and conquering America is hard to binge watch? <laughs> Okay, maybe you need to space it out a little bit, but this series based on the eponymous Philip K. Dick novel is a slice of dystopian all history amazingness that demands to be seen. Mr. Robot. I think that's how it's pronounced. I'm pretty sure the rest of the Nerdist editorial staff would have murdered me if I didn't include this, but Mr. Robot turned what sounded like a by-the-books hacking story into a fiercely intelligent, whip-smart saga full of twists, turns, and genuine surprises. Rami Malek and Christian Slater chew the scenery in this slick, highly addictive techno thriller, and above all else, it showed us how terrifying the flow of information can be in the modern world. I mean, what's your password? No, really. What's your password? Enter it in the comments below. I want to cosplay as you. Master of None. Aziz Ansari proves that he is one of the most dynamic and engaging comedians out there with Master of None. The Netflix original series, co-written with Parks and Rec writer Alan Yang, shines a light on issues of race, romance, and the straight-up ridiculousness of trying to hack it out in the city that never sleeps. Batman the Animated Series. Now, look guys, I shouldn't need to tell you why, but this is the greatest Batman series ever created. 
Kevin Conroy gives the quintessential performance as Gotham's Dark Knight in this Emmy award-winning animated series that gave the world Harley Quinn and so many hours of incredible Gotham City stories. So go ahead, take a walk down memory lane and relive what it was like when Batman wasn't all throaty voices, doom, and gloom. Oh no, we're not. Shut up, no one cares, this is so much better. Now, obviously, there's a metric ton of TV out there to binge on, so let us know your top picks in the comments below. And while you're there, binge on giving me thumbs up, thumbs up until the end of time 100 years of thumbs ups all right guys thank you so much that's all for today's show my god secret santa is that you secret santa yeah i know we, we met earlier this week yeah but it's what... me dan i'm secret santa okay the yeah. secret guardian of office secret santa's do you, everywhere do you say this every time you come what are you doing here i'm here to give you your present oh well i'm sorry i was very rude i do love presents thank you so much there's a sack in my face don't take that to hard internet uh i hope it's not something like spy oh my god what the hell? It's an industrial sized jar of mayo! Oh my god! This is so thoughtful and so sweet. Guys, this actually makes a phenomenal moisturizer. You just grab a big old scoop, slather it on your face, and you will clear up whatever condition you have seborrheic dermatitis, rosacea, eczema. It'll be gone by morning. You can take that to the bank. This is the sweetest thing I've ever received. Do you know who gave it to me? Mm -mm -mm. You'll have to watch Nerdist News on Friday to find out. <sighs> it's such a far, far way away. I don't want to do that. Well, you know what? Actually, I'll just spend that time slathering. Okay, shh, on my face. Great. Well, guys, let's try that again. Thank you so much for watching today's show. Be sure to tune in next time. We talk about how a car accident turns into a madcap chase to capture animals imbued with Ben Stiller and Chris Rock's voices in It's a Mad, Mad, Mad Madagascar. Until next time, keep on digging, just like I'm going to dig into this mayo. And now, guys, I'd like to take a quick moment to address one of your comments. So, on last week's episode, Oishin McMahon on YouTube, Ocean, Oishin, I'm so sorry, I'm butchering your name right now. He left the comment, who needs the Bat Cave when you have the Dan Cave? Which is awesome, I mean, yeah, the Dan Cave is pretty great, I think so, but I have to say, you know who needs the Bat Cave? Bruce. Wayne, he can't solve crimes in here. It looks like a library had a baby with a gastro pub. And you know what, I'm cool with it, but it's not exactly conducive to solving crimes. So thank you again for watching. Thank you so much for your comment. And guys, please leave a comment down below. I will read it and maybe I'll respond to it on next week's episode.